A shape tween is going to do just the opposite. We're actually going to change the object. Now, a lot of people might think of the word morph when we're talking about that because we're really going to start with one object and completely change it into a second object. Now, the first requirement of doing a shape tween is implied by the name itself. We need to do this tween on shape objects. So it's almost the exact opposite of doing a motion tween. Motion tweens, we can't do it on shape objects, and shape tweens, we must do on shape objects. Now, I'm just going to pick out a part of our robot that's still a shape. I'm going to pick out the mouth down here. Now, let me zoom in on that so we can get a good close-up of what we've got going here. The mouth is just a rounded rectangle that's been dropped in with a gray fill. As you can see, it's a shape. It does have a stroke outline around it. Let me get my transform tool off here so we can see that a little bit better. So I've got a few parts of that connected together, I can see, by clicking on the different outline segments. Now when we're setting up a shape tween, we also have some different considerations. We don't have to worry about how many objects are in the shape tween. We can shape tween as many little pieces as we want to. This is designed for vector shapes, and it can even work on very complex vector shapes. Now to get a shape tween to work, all we need to do is set up two keyframes with different shapes in them. Now, a lot of times, I will make the two different shapes from the same original shape, and it kind of works out a little bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this rounded rectangle for the first shape, and I'm just going to modify this vector shape and change it, and that will create our second shape for us. Now, what I had in mind is I'm going to make our robot smile, but I only want to do it after all of these lightning bolts and everything has appeared. So I'm going to go down in the animation, and I'm going to create a keyframe right about here at frame 40. Now, with our situation, I'm going to use that as a start frame. So I'm going to create another keyframe out here, let's say around frame 55. This is the one we're going to be making our changes on. Now, I want to make sure I don't accidentally change any of the other layers. So I'm just going to right-click this layer. You can also control select it on the Mac. I'll get the context selection menu, and it has this nice feature up here at the top called Lock Others. That will lock every other layer in the program except the one we're working on. And that way we won't make any inadvertent selections on any other layers. Now I can just click away from everything. And I'm going to modify this into kind of a smile shape by pulling on the bottom and the top here. Now it looks like I need to pull the shape up a little bit here in order to kind of clean out that smile. And I've got a little lump here on the bottom that I want to clean up too. So I'm just pushing and pulling this shape in to create my new smile shape. There we go. If we'd like to smooth it, of course I can just double click and select all the shapes in there. I could use a smoothing tool on it. And that cleans things up a little bit. It looks like I smoothed too much, so I'm going to do an undo. And that looks like a pretty good smile for my robot. Now, it may not look like we have two separate vectors, but if we look at the vectors taking this up, in fact we can even look at them with the subselect tool. I can click around this and see a certain set of points on one vector. If I go back to the original vector, it's much simpler. I don't have nearly as many points. So even though we made one shape from the other, they are really two completely different vectors that we're working with here. Now we're ready to finish this off. We've got our two vector shapes, and all I need to do is go back to the beginning one and go to the tween settings, but this time I'm going to choose Shape. Now we can easily tell a shape tween in the timeline from a motion tween because of the color. And if we drag the playhead, we should be able to see our tween. There you can see our smile is bending up from that flat shape. Okay, so we've got a very simple object changing from one point to another. We can try that again with the teeth. Since the teeth should move with the smile as well, I can do a shape tween on those. Now if I take a look at the teeth layer, let me go back to my normal selection tool. I've got all shapes. Oh, I guess I should unlock it first. I've got all shapes there. So let me just lock the mouth layer so we get the same kind of behavior. I've got all shapes in my teeth layer. Now we have several shapes this time. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick the same exact point so that the smile starts at the same time. I'll add a keyframe to make sure we have a good starting point. I'll add another keyframe for the ending point. And here, I'm just going to take each one of the teeth and kind of pull it over, rotate it a little bit so it fits in the mouth. 
and we'll clean up the other teeth as well. So this one should be down kind of in the center. Oh, and I didn't select both of those. Let me undo that change. Command Z, and I'll double click to grab it all. It's a little bit hard to see when I have the transform tool up, but we've only got one more. I'll double click to grab the shape in the outline. Let's go out and rotate it a little bit. And there, that looks like a good toothy robot smile. Now in this case, I haven't actually changed the shapes. So technically, I could have done this tween using a motion tween. But what I would have had to do is create a layer for each one of the teeth. Remember our one object per layer rule for motion tweens. So we're technically not changing the shapes, but we are rotating and moving them around. Let's see how this is going to work. I've got the start position and the end position for all my shapes. I'm going to go back to the beginning one. We'll set the tween to shape. And let's drag along our timeline and see how we did. Okay. Now, that shows you the control difference that we have between a motion tween, which would have been very exact, and a shape tween, which can sometimes do a few unpredictable things. There you can see it rotated the tooth.